Namaste guys, in this video we are going to learn how to do simple static simulation in SOLIDWORKS and I am going to create everything from scratch. So let's start. So first I need a geometry on which I am going to do static simulation. So let's create it. Click on sketch. Okay. After that select the front plane. Click on sketch. Now I am basically going to make simple L shape. Press escape. Now give the length and width as per your requirement. In my case, I am giving 100 by 100 mm. It means 10 cm. For those you know who use inch units, they might face some issues. So it means 10 cm. Okay. Now thickness in the reverse direction. Click on here and click on mid plane. Increase the thickness as per your requirement. Uh, I am making it again 100 mm. Okay, and let's increase the thickness to 15 mm. Click OK. After that, select this face. Click on Sketch. Now draw a circle. Twenty mm. Twenty mm. Fifteen mm. Draw a center line like this. And click on mirror entities. Select this line and mirror about this line. Click OK. Go to the features. Click on extrude cut. Click on through all. Click OK. Similarly, select this face. Click on sketch. Draw a circle. 15 mm. Twenty mm, twenty mm, and we will use mirror command again. Select this, click on mirror entities, mirror about this line, click OK, and extrude cut. Click OK. Now to start a static simulation, first I need to add in the static simulation. So I will go to the Solveworks add-in and click on Solveworks simulation. Just in case, if somebody doesn't see the tab Solveworks add-in, uh, what you can do, simply, uh, wait a minute, it's loading. Okay, it's, I need to hold a second. Okay, it's load now. So if anybody not able to see Solveworks add-in, what you have to do is simply go to the sketch, right click on it, click on tabs, and look for SOLIDWORKS, uh, look for simulation. Still, if you are still not able to see, click on here, click on add-ins and add the SOLIDWORKS simulation from here, okay? As you can see, I already checked in. Now close it. If still you are not able to see, it means that you have not installed SOLIDWORKS simulation. That is the reason you are not able to see. Now go to the simulation, click on here, click on new study. So what kind of study we are going to do? We are going to do static simulation. Click OK. Now first thing that it asks, it asks me what is the material. So right click on it and you can see this is a part and I need to apply a material. So you can apply the material from here, favorite material list or click on apply edit materials. Now you see. A whole list of uh, steel or other material is showing here okay you can also make your custom material if you want but in my case I think arrow steel is fine so I click on apply and close now you see the material name is showing next thing it is asking for connections so connection is basically used if I do some assembly parts but in my case it is a single part so I don't need connections okay so ignore this thing next thing is fixtures so fixture as its name signify it means what is fixed suppose i don't apply fixtures so if a force load is applied this part will you know move away so i need something to make it fix so that is the reason we use fixtures you can also go here and see all kind of fixtures or you can use advanced fixtures as well okay 
So in my case, I'm going to use cylindrical faces. Click on cylindrical faces and select these cylindrical faces. Okay. Now if I move downwards, you will see these kind of things. Click on here and make the value 0, 0. Some people might wonder what this logo uh, signifies. Simply go here, you can see these logos. So they are explaining what this signifies. What I've done is I simply said hey that all the movement radial, circumference and axial movement is zero. So it basically means that these holes are not going to move anything or rotate. Okay, that is the thing. Click OK. After that, I need to apply a load. Okay, basically I have a you know body, but there is no load. So how can I apply a load? So I can go here and click on force and I will select a face and apply the force but uh, it look quite odd you know I am selecting the whole face uh, in reality you know whole, whole load will not apply on this whole face there is some particular small area so how can I apply a load on a small face only let's say I will go to the model select this face click on sketch let's say I only want to apply the load up to on this face so what I can do, go to the features, click on curves, click on split line and select this face, click ok. So what will happen, I can select this face and it will not you know, do any kind of deformation thing. Uh, what most beginners do to make this kind of surface especially, they will use extrude cut, don't do that, just use split line to make a particular face that you want to select for simulation. Now I will go again to the simulations and go here and apply a force load so it's up to you how much force you want to apply in my case i'm applying a load of uh, 5000 newton click ok as you can see all the forces are applied here next thing is called mesh so higher the mesh quality better will be the result so but in my case i think the mesh will be fine just simply click on run this study it will create the mesh you will see okay just gonna show the mesh so this is the simulation it shows for some reason if anybody want to see you know mesh so simply create and create mesh click ok don't worry about that so okay so if i click on ok you can see course of fine so if i go to the fine mesh size will be smaller but it will increase the computational time so i recommend choose the mesh quality as per your requirement there are other parameters if you want to you know control the size of mesh what kind of parameter you want and advance if you have some particular points where you are interested to increase the mesh quality so you can also do that but in my case uh, this simple is fine click ok And you can see now this is the mesh that we have created. It's a triangular mesh. Okay, now click on run this study. So you can see my data. Now a question arises: uh, Is this a good result or bad result? Uh, for example, once I have done a simulation, and one of the guy pointed out, "Hey, that your stress is far higher." Then the material, you know, yield strength or ultimate breaking point. So here's the thing. For example, if I applied a load of, you know, nine metric ton here, SolidWorks is uh, still going to show that hey, that this is the displacement and this is the stress. Just to you know that SolidWorks only going to show you the stress and strain. It will not going to tell you hey whether it will break or not. It is you. You are an engineer, so you must know what is the limit of it. So SolidWorks is not going to tell you, hey, that your material breakdowns, etc, etc. Even if you apply a, you know, uh, material like mirror or glass and apply a lot of 10,000 Newton, it will simply show that it's, uh, you know, displaced or something else. But, you know, better material will break basically. So it will not going to show its break, etc. It will simply most of the time will show that it displaces or sometimes it may show error, that's all. But it will not going to tell you whether it will break or not. 
so make sure always always check whether your material can handle this load or not so if i go to the apply material alloy steel okay so its elastic mode is 21000 newton per mm square uh, but my value is quite high so it means this material is will going to be fail so it can't handle that kind of that much load that i applied on it okay so so this newton per mm square and i have units of newton meter square so what if somebody say hey i don't want to see the units of newton per meter square i want some other units so right click on results click on edit definitions so instead of newton m meter square select newton mm square click ok so this is my uh, results so if i go to the plated material and i see this so i can say hey that material uh, my material can uh, you know able to handle this load because it is newton meter uh, mm square okay so i can say hey yes uh, my material can handle this load because it is less than the elastic modulus and this the uh, the current thing we are seeing is stress so you can see this here the stress is in region maximum now right click on here click on show so here you can see the maximum displacement uh, displacement basically means weight going to maximum band so you can see the displacement okay i hope you are you have also read uh, strength of material so read that the uh, dis displacement you know the definition and this is strain here you can see the maximum strain now someone will say hey man that i want to plot a graph so how can i do that so click on plot tools click on section clipping so in section clipping you can see which section you want to clip and see the how stress is very from inside the material that is a very good thing you know to see the stress from inside of a material so you can visualize right now so how does stress is distributed i can simply select this arrow and drag it to see how the stress is distributed inside a material okay and for you know there are many other, other things that you can do uh, section clipping for example if you okay Oh, this one this everything and yeah you can also animate uh, the graph so right click on it and click on animate so you can see this is how you can animate your graph you can also save the file save as ani again it's up to you how where you want to save it so if you click on here it will ask a location and you can save it but again it's up to you Similarly, you can create a displacement stress animation. Okay. So I hope that's for all for beginners. And if you want to learn about solve simulation in more detail, I highly recommend check out my free courses link in description. If you learn more about in details about solve simulation. So that's for all. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any kind of doubts and queries, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching. And have a great day. Namaste.